And so let's talk about that for a moment. This first idea of walking together. Walking together. What does that look like? Are you, am I, are we walking with anybody else? Are we walking with anybody else? If we're going to walk together, there's some things that have to happen, right? I should be real clear. Burdell, you come here a minute. Let's have Terry come here a minute. Let's have Susie come here a minute. And Jill, thanks for volunteering. Let's have Joe come here a minute. Right? And, and who else do we want to volunteer? Let's see. Yeah, come on, Isaiah, you can come. And so let's all go over this way. And see, or we're not walking together quite yet. Right? Now, if we're going to walk together, let's walk together across the stage, okay? Now, what do you notice about us walking together? You have a leader? Okay, that's a good observation. What else do you notice? They're all following. So we're all being led in the same what? Direction. Now, what happens if Jill decides that she wants to go this way and Susie decides that she wants to go that way? Terry decides, I'm not walking anymore, so I'm just staying here. Are we all walking together anymore? No. And so if our goal is to get over there, how are we going to do that? We have to work together. And so if we're going to work together at this point, what might have to happen? We said... Terry didn't want to walk anymore. So what might have to happen for Terry? Somebody might have to help her. So Burdell, being a big, strong man, might have to come alongside Terry and help Terry to get going. Isaiah might have to come over here beside Jill and encourage Jill to get back in the walk. And so go over there and encourage Jill. And I might come alongside Susie and say, sweetheart, what's happening? Why, why aren't you walking with us anymore? And she might say, because you made me mad. But you see, all of us have to work together and be willing to walk together in unity if we're going to get there together, right? Now, say that we have a purpose of getting something done and something accomplished, right? Now, the idea that we need to understand is that as we walk together, God has also called us to work together, and we're going to get there in just a minute. But let's talk about this idea of walking together for a minute. And aren't they all nice looking up there? Right? You don't have to clap for them. It's okay. They didn't do that much yet. We're going to get them there. We'll let you clap for them in a minute. But there's some ideas that you and I need to grasp and understand as we walk together. We're walking together in what? In unity and in love, the Bible said there. And so if we're walking together in unity and love, it doesn't mean that we go on a walk by ourselves, but that we're looking around and we're aware of what's going on in one another's life. So as I said, somebody might get tired and not want to walk anymore. And so for that person, you have to come alongside and you have to pick them up and you might have to carry them for a little bit. That's Galatians 6. And I'd encourage you to look at some of these scriptures. For some of us, we might just get discouraged and just get off track a little bit. For some of us, we might need a little bit more encouragement. We might need somebody to provoke us to walk. Maybe we need somebody to pray with us as we walk. Maybe we might need somebody just to love us and to lift us up. But we have to understand where we're going, don't we? In order to join the walk. And so where are we going as a church? Do you know? You see, we better understand that God has called us together to walk together and to work together for one cause. And what is that? That the body of Christ might be built up. What did Jesus say before he left? He ascended from the grave. He called uh, on his friends to get together. All the followers of Christ, he met him up on the mountain. The Bible says some worshipped him and others doubted him. Unbelievable. How could you doubt the risen Christ? You watched him die. Now you're looking at him alive. 
But some doubted. But then he gave to them these words. Listen, I have called you all together. All power, all authority has been given to me. And then he said these words. Now go and what? Make disciples. That sounds like the building up of the church, doesn't it? Go and make disciples. Teach them. Help them. Encourage them to grow in all of the things that I have taught you. That they might become mature. That they might grow. That then they might make disciples. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And guess what? You are not alone. For I am with you always, even unto the end. Walking together. And so not only does God call us to walk together, and there are times in our lives when you and I need to enter one another's life and help one another and encourage one another and pray for one another and love one another and lift one another up and bear one another's burdens and forgive one another and just come alongside that we are not walking alone. But we're also called then to work together. And the way that we're called to work together is that God gives us different gifts. Verse 7 told us that unto each of us, Christ gave a measure of faith or Christ gifted us in a certain way. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to give each of them a microphone. and They're going to tell us for the next five minutes how God has gifted them. Amen. Oh, look, they're all walking away. I'm just teasing. But if we realize that God has given us different giftings in order that we could work together to carry out this purpose or this cause that the body of Christ might be built up, that we all might grow together in unity into the fullness of the maturity of a, 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 a believer in God, that we would not be tossed to and fro, but that we would stay free, that we could help set others free. Then we must realize that each part has to be equipped and engaged to do its work. And if each part doesn't do its work, then the um, calling that we've been given, the job that we've been given, the work that we've been given, the work of the ministry, the work of the building up of the body of Christ, the growing together into maturity in Christ, that it's not going to be done. Now, you've seen us try to move this desk around once in a while, right? Right? It's not the lightest thing in the world. And it has obstacles that come with it when you try to move it. All right? And as I try to move it, I can slide it a little bit. But before long, as I try to slide it, I'm going to get really tired. Right? But I have friends that are gifted in different ways. So all my friends now, wait a minute, let me come get you so you have a leader. All right, let's walk this way. You know, and as I think about walk this way, I just can't help this next line. Right. Okay. I'm done with that. All right. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk this over there. Okay. And down on the floor. You guys ready for that? Down the steps. Go ahead. Where are you going? <laughs> Work together. Work together. Work together. Unity. Unity. Okay, but I just don't want to do it anymore. And see, now what's happening is it's not getting done because each part isn't doing its work, right? Now, getting the desk to the floor isn't a big deal. And you can all be seated. Thanks. I think you helped with the word picture in a great way. Didn't they help? Good. All right. Listen, if everybody doesn't do your part, what happens is one person gets exhausted trying to do it all. See, what you and I need to understand is that we cannot do everything. But we can do something. You know, that would be something great for each one of us to understand. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. 